Is the helium market going to worsen further? Um, what could we perhaps expect in the next uh, you know, 12 months or beyond? Um, Jeremy, perhaps you could try and just give us a perspective on that from where you sit. Do you think we're going to see things get worse? Uh, are they going to improve? What, what, what do you think? I mean, ultimately, I'll punt this one to, uh, uh, to Nick. But um, I mean, from where we're sitting um, and just seeing, I mean, we're, we're kind of keenly focused on, on, let's say, North American development efforts. And, and um, um, well, at least on the development side, I mean, there's been a lot of activity. I mean, to the extent things have been tight, um, you know, I don't, I'm not, you know, necessarily aware of anything that's going to shift it into, you know, total oversupply, at least on the, you know, North American side. Um, but, but there certainly is a lot of development activity with, with some really interesting projects. So it doesn't feel like things are going to get worse there. I mean, things, and again, I'll, I'll defer to Nick on a lot of this, this stuff, but from, you know, our, our observations of the North American market, things were pretty chaotic there, um, you know, say over the last, you know, couple of years, really, you know, going from one extreme to another. Um, and that seems to have stabilized where, you know, things still seem relatively tight, but, um, you know, a little, a little calmer. Um, I don't know what's on the horizon that's going to materially change that. As I said, it's kind of stable to tight. I don't know what's going to change that one way or another, you know, let's say looking at the next next 12 months, but, but, but perhaps Nick has, has got a, a better, better view on that. You know, Nick, Jeremy's really set you up there. Have you, have you got anything uh, you could potentially add? <laughs> Thank, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, so so I'll 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 actually take us back to uh, the gas world. What was it called? The super duper conference that we had last year, when I think the view was that you know we were heading to a massive oversupply, and in the month or so following that, what happened? A, we had um, we well. Somebody experienced an explosion in Amur, which impacted the ability of Gazprom to produce helium there. And on the 12th of January, the BLM shut down the plant. And um, that plant was down for over five months. Most of you know that Mesa actually entered into an agreement with the BLM to take over operations. The plant was actually restarted around June, July timeframe before it got to be sort of operating stably. So that was a huge impact on the overall supply situation regarding the helium market. The BLM um, system is still very, very significant in overall supply of helium to the market. And that was a big impact. Um, a lot of you also know that we have the impending BLM system sale. Um, that could result in further outages um, that will impact the market. So. I've got to tell you, when we sat there in December and said the market, you know, the sense I got was that there was a view that the market would be long. It certainly hasn't been the case this year. Um, there's obviously still a lot of uncertainty around Amur and when that might start up, a lot of political issues, which obviously I'm not going to address. But, you know, I, I've got to the point of saying it's very hard to make accurate predictions in, in the helium supply situation. So I'm not trying to punt it uh, like Jeremy did. I'm just saying it's complex and there's a lot of factors that are way outside of our of, of our control. You know, as I said, if, if you imagine the BLM sale happening and unresolved issues could result in that being out of action for months. So there there are concerns about about how the you know, the system sale will occur if that's done stably. I, I think that, you know, that you can avoid that um, possibility, but it, it's very real. 